Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome to a whole new year. And I guess, as some mistakenly might think, a whole new decade. It's hard to believe that it's already 2010, and they said it wouldn't last. First of all, I want to thank you all for supporting us. Those of you who gave us business over the holidays and stuff, it's been a very, very busy time, which is kind of hectic, but at the same time, it really helps us keeping on doing what we love so we can help you keep on doing what you love, which is playing the clarinet among other things. Um, so anyway, I thought we'd start the, the new year off with something very simple, and that is, a, and something very basic, and that is learning a few things about the clarinet mechanism. Many of you will already know this, so I ask your forbearance because there are a lot of people who don't know this. As a matter of fact, it always amazes me how little um, clarinet players and even fine clarinet players really know about how the clarinet actually works as far as the, mechanic, uh, the mechanics go. I recall once a very fine clarinet player uh, drove in a panic uh, to my shop, drove over 40 miles uh, to get to my shop when I was living in Connecticut. And uh, uh, she had to play a concert the next day and she had to practice and she just told me over, over the phone, the clarinet just, just stopped just stopped and she was, I could hear in her voice that she saw, thought something horrible was, had gone wrong. And she brought the clarinet to my shop. I opened the case, took the upper joint out, looked and saw one spring I had popped off of the, uh, the spring catch. I popped it back on and the clarinet worked perfectly. Something she could have done if she had any just basic observation and understanding of how the clarinet worked. It's kind of embarrassing. Uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to save you from that, but I'd also do more, like to do more than save you from embarrassment. I'd like you to have you to develop a few skills on the clarinet that will enable you to actually help your students and evaluate your students' clarinets. I mean, for instance, a lot of times a, a teacher who really can't evaluate a clarinet in terms of its actual playing condition will blame students for problems that really start in the clarinet. And it's not that the students don't have problems, but the students' problems are often caused or exacerbated by the fact that the clarinet itself is not in proper adjustment. So uh, let's get started by talking about a few really basic things here, okay? The first thing I'd like to talk about is the bridge work. Now, the bridge key mechanism is the worst idea on the clarinet, just about probably next to the crow's foot. No, maybe even a couple more. But anyway, uh, that's a terrible idea, and it goes back to Renaissance technology. So we're back in, you know, 16th, 17th century uh, uh, technology when we uh, get to the bridge mechanism. But it's something we still have to deal with. There are some solutions to it, but no manufacturer has ever really consistently employed uh, convincing solutions. So what are you going to do? You just have to deal with the clarinet as it is. When you assemble the clarinet, of course, you always have to check this bridge connection here to make sure that it really is in good alignment. Now, one of the, uh, you might say catch-22s of the 1-in-1 of the B flat is that when it looks in alignment, it doesn't mean that it's going to work, and it's not correct until it works. So, if it doesn't work, how do we correct it? Well, let's say, for instance, that we put the clarinet together and, uh, and when we press the first finger down here, when we touch this key up here, the, this uh, B flat up here, we see that there's a lot of play there that's really not closing. This pad is closing, but this one is not closing. Well, if that happens, then in order to correct it, what you have to do is move the clarinet this way. In other words, if you were looking down from the clarinet at the top, you would be moving the clarinet clockwise. Remember clocks? Remember how the arms move, you digital folks? Uh, you would move it clockwise and you could continue to move it clockwise until until this key, until this pad perfectly closes. Now let's say that you assemble the clarinet and you began to put your first finger down and you saw hey that that closes real well but then this pad doesn't close at all. Well, that's called over-adjustment. That's over-adjusted. And you don't want uh, that to be over-adjusted because uh, when it is, uh, 
this pad is closing early and preventing this, this pad from closing. So when you play down into the low register and go from low C to low B flat, the B flat won't even respond and neither will the B unless you squeeze really hard. And of course, if the adjustment is over adjustment is really bad, the B flat won't close at all. So the uh, solution for that is to back the bridge mechanism up to turn it back clock counterclockwise until again this pad closes firmly and this pad also closes without squeezing. I can still feel that a little bit closing so I move it a little bit back and there. Now the clarinet's properly adjusted and ready to play. I can uh, play the one in one and it responds perfectly. I don't have any play with the pad up here and I don't have to squeeze on the keys the rings to make the first pad close. So that's an adjustment now and uh, depending on how your clarinet is adjusted the bridge mechanism at that point may not look like it's in perfect alignment but again it's not the visual thing that the bridge uh, work is for um, it's to get these keys these two pads to close in proper order and um, so that's what you need to concentrate on so those are the simple solutions for the clarinet. You always have to pay attention uh, to, to how you assemble that bridge work in order to get that one-in-one -one B flat to work. Uh, so pay attention to that when you assemble the clarinet and you won't have any problems when you perform and have to use that fingering. The second problem is something you might run into with your students. Most of the students still have skin pads installed in the clarinets. And you know, um, some students are a little more moist than others and they put a lot of moisture down the bore. And of course, uh, that uh, can run into tone holes. And when it runs into the A key, especially if the A key is a skin pad, that key can swell. And the reason that we usually have a little play between the A and the A flat with the adjustment screw is just for that very reason. Now, I, I have uh, synthetic pads in my Lyric clarinet, so I don't have to worry about that so much. But if you have a skin pad there, that pad might swell, and if there's no, if there's no a play uh, with the adjustment screw on the A-flat key, this can swell up to the point uh, that, that the A key can swell up to the point that um, the A-flat uh, key will actually be lifted off the tone hole, and it won't seal. And when that happens, the clarinet doesn't play at all. And when the clarinet won't even make a sound, won't even play open G well, uh, students and teachers can go into panic mode for sure. Well, of course, the simple solution for that is really, so it never happens, is to, is to get a, a cork pad or a synthetic pad here that won't uh, absorb the water and won't uh, swell up. Synthetic pads are actually better. Uh, or always make sure that you have this adjustment screw. So again, I've had people come to the shop in panic mode, and all you have to do is back off the screw there on the A, uh, uh, on the a flat key, and voila, it closes and the whole clarinet plays again. So this is something you need to check on clarinets uh, with the students uh, and uh, along with the one-in-one -one key to make sure that they have the proper amount of play here because this can happen all of a sudden in concert and the clarinet will just stop playing uh, unless this is properly adjusted. So there you go. See how simple those things are? And I know a lot of you out there already know this stuff, but you know, some of you don't, especially some of the young players uh, that, might, uh, that might look in here. So it's, uh, it can save you a lot of heartache and save you from being like completely shocked out of your mind and think your clarinet is irreparably uh, damaged in some way and will never play again. So um, anyway, uh, learn these few things and we'll talk about some more in the next video. Okay, thanks for dropping in. Drop by and see us at our website. Uh, we're always happy to hear your comments and also uh, receive some of your questions that you would like uh, discussed, um, just as long as you don't get personal. See you next time.